Well, good day. It is a frosty one. Minus 25 degrees. Out running the Martin Loop today. Remember this box? Kept getting bait stolen from it. Coming by here today. Look what we got. Wow, hey. Nice fisher. Wow, nice color to him. Now this was a Martin box. So this is just a 110. We got a good shot right around the neck. Doesn't look like he struggled much at all. Beautiful, beautiful animal. Just beautiful. Such nice color. All right, still got bait in there. Got the box reset. So I'm just finishing up the Martin loop today. Uh, nothing else to really show for it. A few weasels and a squirrel. And then that fisher, which is pretty awesome. So now what we gotta do is we gotta go get busy trapping coyotes, lynx, and wolves. Got a few people asking about our squirrel poles that we set at the cabin here. And uh, still got them up during the month of November. I caught three squirrels off of them. And for a while, wasn't having any, any more squirrels around the cabin. There were some tracks, but none running up into the rafters. And today, the good Lord blessed us with not one, but two. Out back behind the cabin here. Two squirrels. Both good catches right around the neck. So that's perfect. We didn't get a deer, so we're gonna be eating a lot of small game. And this right here, this is dinner. Look at the fur on this one squirrel. The beautiful long guard hair. This one must have been caught not that long ago, it's not even frozen. Beautiful fur. Nice bushy tail. There's a bird on my camera. So the Martin line has not been producing. It's been up for over a month now. No Martin. And to be honest with you, this year I have not been seeing much for fresh Martin tracks. I think I've seen two sets of fresh Martin tracks throughout all of November. So I don't know if the Martin numbers are just at the low part of their cycle or what the deal is. There has been lots of logging in the area in the recent years, so I don't know if that's been affecting the populations. But as of right now, the Martin line is not producing. Now, I was going to spend today building lynx cubbies, getting some lynx snares out, and also some wolf snares. But where I want to go is complete opposite of where the Martin line is. So I think today I'm going to go and pull the Martin line. That way I can focus on the other area of our trap line. We haven't been over there in quite a few years. Most of the trails need to get cleared and reopened up, and that's really where I want to dedicate my time. Ah, oh, another weasel. Nice looking one. We got a stretch of bush here that's been 
flagged out by the logging companies. I actually thought this year that it was going to get logged. Just to be safe, I'm getting these boxes out of here. We can use them on a different part of our line. There we got the trap, got our nails, and the box itself. So some of you might be wondering why there would be logging on our trap line. Which is a fair question. So here in Alberta we have two types of trapping. We have residential trapping and registered trapping. So residential trapping is basically your private land trapping where either you own the land and you trap on it or you have permission from the landowner to trap it. Then we also have registered trapping. So here in Alberta it's divided up into, I can't remember how many exactly, I want to say it's like 1600 different trapping areas or maybe it's 2,000 I can't remember but either way Alberta just divided up into a bunch of different uh, registered fur management areas or RFMAs we just call them trap lines so we don't own the land this is government owned land we just have the rights to trap this land so nobody else can trap here just us but since it's government owned land there's other resources on here that other companies and people bid for one of which is obviously logging, which is good. I'm not against logging by any means as long as it's done in a sustainable way, which here there's a lot of regulations around the logging industry, so it's, you know, it's, it's pretty good. So that's kind of the gist of things. But having the different fur management areas is really beneficial to the conservation of species. It allows for the government to track the harvest of these different species very closely. There's some species that you have to actually go in and get registered as well. Uh, for example, fisher and lynx, we have to actually take in and get them registered in person. And then uh, at the end of every trapping season, we got to fill out reports that state exactly how many of each species we caught in each area. And we are in touch with biologists quite often and relay a lot, a lot of information back to them about how populations are doing and what kind of success, what kind of... Um, sign we're seeing, how many of each species we're catching, how the health of the animals that we catch is. All in all it's a real great system and it allows for a real good management of these fur bearing species that we're after. Alright well we're through the section that we had to remove boxes. I don't believe this area is going to be getting logged. Pretty much through the Martin Loop I think I have maybe four or five traps left on the way back to the cabin. Just beautiful country back in here. This thick bush. So amazing. So incredibly blessed to be able to be out here doing this, to live this lifestyle. I'm so, so grateful for it.
All right, well, this is looking pretty good. We got some jasmine rice. We got some pork and beans. Mm. And of course, the star of the show, some crispy squirrel legs. Fried up. I think they turned out all right. Let's see how crunchy they got. Crisped up real good. Wow. Mmm. Mmm. Those are darn good. Fried up like this, they they're exactly like uh, garlic dry ribs. Mm. Wow. Same texture and everything. Yeah, I think we're gonna have to get busy trapping squirrels. This is a fine, fine meal right here. Get some bean action going on. Mm. Can't go wrong with beans. So yeah, let me know if you guys would be interested in me doing some like different squirrel recipes and some rabbit recipes. I think this is going to be my new uh, squirrel leg dry rib recipe. Garlic, garlic dry, I don't know, garlic dry fried squirrel leg. Fried garlic dry squirrel. I think I just swallowed a bone. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, neither one of these squirrels are stringy or tough. Very tender. Really, really delicious. Alright, well, I'm going to finish up my dinner here and uh, get to bed and then wake up tomorrow. I'm going to be busy setting, setting snares tomorrow. Alright, I'll see you in the morning. Well, it's turning out to be a mighty fine day today. Started off with setting some squirrel poles. My dad's out here with me. He brought out some bait and threw some down at the coyote bait. So we got that up and running now. Hopefully within a week or two, the coyotes will be hitting it hard and we can get going on the coyotes. We got a lot of fresh wolf sign in the area, lots of tracks. We got a few wolf snares set up already, some lynx cubbies. And I just came to this area following a wolf trail through the bush. And it is beat down with tracks. I was wondering what was going on. Must have killed something here. Sure enough. They got my white tail I was looking for. Jeepers, hey? That's a nice buck. It's kind of cool, but kind of sad as well. We had pictures of this deer on our trail camera. This would have been a really nice one to shoot. Looks like it's a uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, six by one, two, three, four, five, six. A couple little kickers and stuff on it. That's really cool. It's cool that it's drawn in the wolves. Let's get to setting.
Well, we're doing pretty good here today. Just got a few more wolf snares set on the wolf trails running to that kill site. Pretty cool to find. Hopefully those wolves keep coming back and feeding on that carcass and we can maybe get a few wolves off that. Just finished up a lynx cubby here as well, behind me. A nice looking set. We've had lynx tracks walking by this area a few times already this season, so uh, fingers crossed they'll come in. Have a look at our set here and we can get one or two. Yeah, that's the game plan for the rest of the day. We're gonna set a few more lynx snares. Gonna try to get a few squirrel poles going too. Hoping to get maybe a few hundred squirrels this season. That'd be really good. All right, onwards we go. So we got a nice little area here with some good squirrel sign. So I got a horizontal pole going here. I think I'm gonna put a leaning pole up to this tree that's behind you there. Do maybe four, four squirrel snares on this horizontal pole. Nice to see fresh wolf sign. Wolf sign everywhere. You can see where these wolves are coming down the river. They're crossing right underneath this one over spruce tree. So we're gonna try and sneak around right into there. Right where they cross. There, that's pretty well hidden. It's been a good day. We got lynx cubbies up. We got a bunch of fresh wolf sign in the area, which I'm super excited about. So we got a bunch of wolf snares set up and we got more squirrel poles set up as well which is just great the trapping season is definitely underway now trap lines up and running Ugh, couldn't be happier we're getting to the end of the day here so I'm gonna mosey on back to the cabin probably gonna skin out a few small critters tonight play a few games of cards with my dad have ourselves a quick supper and tomorrow we'll be out checking traps Exciting stuff. Oh, it's been a great day. Great day indeed. Good morning, good morning. Not far from the cabin here, just at our first squirrel set. Starting the day. Wanna check traps? So you got one more squirrel there. Nothing on that pole. 
nothing on that pole. And we got another squirrel right there as well. Two squirrels to start the day. That's not too bad. We'll grab them on the way back. For now, we're off to go check some lynx cubbies and some wolf snares. First lynx cubby of the day, no fresh sign around. All the snares are looking good though, so we'll leave her as is for now. Next cubby, three snares at this one. They're all still standing. Bait's still there. No fresh lynx traps around. Traps haven't been touched at all. No lynx through here last night. Checked a few wolf snares past the ones that we set up by that deer that they killed, but they haven't been back there yet, so snares are still hanging. There's nothing more exciting than checking traps, eh? Oh, well, we got a bumped snare. Wonder if that bumped snare is either from the wind or from birds. There was some Canada Jays that flew away. They must be picking up the bait here. It's also a little windy today, so maybe maybe the wind bumped it. Looking good once again. Nice little cubby. Wow, nothing here either. I think last year we caught a couple links at this set. Not much you can do when the links aren't passing through. Well, give them, give them a little more time and they will, I'm sure. Making my way back to the cabin. Got the squirrel pole we stopped by this morning. Got one squirrel there, got one squirrel here, and we got one squirrel there. So this squirrel we got since this morning when we left. So three squirrels today so far. Got a few more traps to check yet, and then we gotta get busy. Going and checking the bait loop, seeing if there's any coyote sign yet. Yeah, we got more lynx cubbies to set. We got a lot of land to open up on the trap line too. A lot left to do yet. This is just the beginning. But it's good we got some 
trap set up. We got wolf sign, wolf snare set up already. We got lynx cubby set up. We're we're gonna get lynx. I know we are. I'm surprised we haven't got any yet. I know they haven't been out for very long, but I thought for sure we'd get one right off the hop with the amount of lynx sign we've been seeing. But we'll give it a few more days, and I'm pretty confident we're gonna get a couple. For now, she's onwards and upwards. I'll have to set more traps. I appreciate your views. I'll be back soon with another video. Until then, God bless and stay wild.